greetings from Chicago and welcome to the Woman in Design video series by Sikalofia. Now on each video, we spotlight talented and inspired women in design community from print to digital, illustrator to animator and others in between. I'm Ari Krzyzewek, co-founder and chief creative officer at Sikalofia. A branding consultancy helping women-led businesses build proper brand foundation, strong communities, and lasting relationship. Today, you guys, oh my God. Ladies, I cannot be more excited than today because today we finally get a chance to talk with Lori Berger, former senior designer at Pinterest. Now, she's an artist, designer, and founder of Lauren Jane Studio. Let's chat with her because honestly, for this particular episode and interview, we're gonna talk about how do you get out of your comfort zone. And if you have been thinking about taking the leap of fate in your career, you maybe wanted to get out of the current career that you have, or you just want to build something on your own, you definitely want to stay tuned on this one and keep on watching this interview with Laurie. So Laurie, how are you doing today? Hello, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, oh my goodness. I. Honestly, I feel like this month has been super crazy and I completely forgot that we have this session. And when I take a look and every notes that I have pulled together, I was like, oh my God, yes, this is her. I mean, this is Laurie, the one that um, her work I have been seeing like really cool and I personally have really admired your work. And here's the thing, I didn't even realize this was you until you reach out and then you share your work and it's like, oh, this is the woman who actually done this cool work. Like the one that um, with Hubble and a couple of others with FabFitFun for Pinterest. It was really, really cool, by the way. <laughs> and, and I really do feel that this opportunity would be really cool to showcase like other women in design who are really looking forward in terms of like, hey, I have this skill, but I feel like I'm stuck right now, or I feel like I wanted to do something more. How can I do that, right? And who else can really share this aside from you, Lori? So before we get into the questions, I do want to do a quick intro about Lori, guys. So if you don't know who Lori, Laurie is a senior graphic designer and artist specializing in brand identity, creative strategy, packaging design, and illustration. Before launching Lauren Jane Studio, she was the senior designer on the studio team at Pinterest, art directing and designing strategy creative campaigns for global brands. She received her BA in art from UCLA, and currently she lives in Palo Alto, California. When she's not building brands or illustrating fun projects in a digital space, you can find her going old school with paint or canvas. I do something like that too in the like hobby days, but I just don't really have enough time to do that anymore. But I'm so glad that you are still doing those because it is so much fun, right? Like you can do paint stuff in canvas, but then again, I'm not illustrator. So Every single time I draw anything, I feel like, yeah, I can't really draw. So I honestly really admire you, Laurie. So, uh, hey, you. yes, um, welcome, welcome to the actual Women in Design video series. So, um, Laurie, tell us what is the current thing you're um, excited about this week or this month? Hmm. Um, let's see, this week. Well, actually, um, Personally, I just finished the painting that I uh, put up on the wall behind me in my studio. So that's probably what I'm Oh, really? <laughs> is that exclusively for today? <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly, but it's a work in progress. I was actually um, putting it on my Instagram story as I was painting it, which I don't often do, but it was a fun way. I love Instagram. Yeah, it's super cool. It's always fascinating for me when I watch one of this, like, okay, work in progress kind of art, right? Or even doodle and things like that because you kind of see how someone really put their, um, how do you say it is like creative mindset into the actual drawing, whether it's on canvas or paper and everything else. It's just so fascinating to see how things are be becoming from like empty or like blank paper Mm -hmm. something with an art so it's always really cool to see are you going to do more of that on your Pinterest are we are we going to expect more of that um I think so so my background started in art 
um, I, I really see myself as seeing design with an art point of view for mm -hmm. especially color and composition. And I always try to apply my art um, to client work, especially most directly through illustrations, which mm -hmm. I love to do for clients. Um, I actually am working on one of those this week, which is very exciting, um, but still under wraps. But I also, I mean, going back, like you said, I, I did go to UCLA and I studied art there, yeah. um, which really was kind of the dream, <laughs> um, just having these wonderful mentors, um, beautiful, like open studio space, very social experience to be able to paint. And um, I did a lot of sculpture, ceramics, dark room photography, but um, I graduated 10 years ago and sometimes I do think back like oh wouldn't it be great if you didn't worry about you know money and you just got to <laughs> fun um, but that was a really great experience just kind of developing that point of view thinking about what is important um, it was a very contemporary uh, program a lot mm -hmm. of conceptual art and um, one of my best friends is a really talented conceptual artist and she's continued making work like performance art um, and I've sort of stuck with the painting route and just like keeping a very visual, um, abstract work focused on, like yeah. I said, color and composition, which I do apply to design. Have you always been illustrating since like early age or when that, when was that skill started to develop for you? Yeah, definitely. Um, my, both of my parents really, you know, helped me. With, we, I, we had a, a kitchen bench that was just full of art supplies all the time and stamps mm -hmm. and paper. Um, and, you know, my second grade art was hung on the walls. <laughs> despite <laughs> the um, but yeah, I, I mean, I took art as an elective all four years of high school. Um, I ended up getting into UCLA through the art department, um, which was really sort of a stroke of luck, um, mm -hmm. having that interest and uh, hobby become something that helped me, you know, academically and, and with my future and really set me on this course that was not planned at the time. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking I would study psychology. So really, you know, setting me up with this really um, great, you know, understanding of art and um, developing my own voice and developing, um, yeah, my own eye for um, how and how to guide the viewer's eye around a painting or, mm -hmm. or or um just really studying that in depth has been super helpful and yeah led me to a career that can be based around something I love which I am really happy about and lucky, lucky that about. is super cool I feel like the exposure to art at an early age is definitely a great benefit right I mean for me I didn't actually get a lot of exposure. I mean, I was living in Bali and then all the things that we have around us is all about tourism. Um, and I think the moment that I realized I don't want to take part in a tourism at all, it's interesting how I see art and design pretty much as an alternative or where I could potentially um, like further develop my career on. So it was quite interesting how some of our backgrounds um, and things that we are growing, growing up with can really help us develop our own character later on. And in terms of like our own inspiration and our own personal branding, it's just kind of, uh, it will shine through, right? Since the thing that you actually grow up with is actually something that you are really trying to um, expose yourself into and um, share it with the world as well. So it's really cool that you actually took on that and basically have this awesome background in arts. So is that one of the one thing that can help you or um, get you interested in working with Pinterest or how is that? Because I know you used to work at Pinterest until um, recently and how was that um, experience working with one of the top social media company in the world? Um, yeah, so actually that started, it was primarily through design, but also mm -hmm. through product photography. So I, um, and I, actually going back to college too, I studied darkroom photography, and I, I considered becoming a photographer uh, as I graduated, primarily because of that freelance lifestyle just seeming so <laughs> ideal at the time, of course, not wanting to go yeah. at 21. 
Um, but I, yeah, I started and um, graphic design and creating pins for brands. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of global brands who were signing partnerships with Pinterest, but maybe they didn't understand um, what worked on Pinterest just yet. And they were a little bit nervous at the time. I think a lot of brands didn't know how to create vertically. They were designing a lot of banner ads, but um, you know, Facebook and Google at the time were primarily horizontal and there was that hurdle. And so my team was sort of helping educate about how, what's successful, you know, don't just put a banner ad on Pinterest, but really create something helpful, engaging, mm -hmm. something that people will want to save, uh, that doesn't just feel like a huge ad that someone's just gonna wanna scroll past, you know? Yeah, yeah cause I think, uh, when was this? Um, Pinterest started what ten years ish ago, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think the first time it came out, I thought it was like super cool because you can save really useful things in a board rather than maybe emailing it to yourself or just like have a okay. document and everything. It's just so good to see those visual because it's really helpful to just kind of see. Oh, that was the thing that I wanted to do next week for I don't know, like a party or something like that, or maybe like a cooking. Um, week that you actually wanted to do with your friends. It was super helpful. And I think it has become a really interesting um, tools for a specific um, industry. Like for bloggers, they use a lot of the Pinterest, um, like pins and the boards just to kind of propel their own content. So I'm wondering, what would one thing that you see a lot of brands really using on Pinterest or the thing that your team really helped them build um, maybe from scratch into specific achievement? Mm -hmm. um, so I think on Pinterest, you see a lot of aspirational content. It's just like dream homes and dream, you know, closet. Okay. Um, I think oftentimes when a brand is able to kind of bridge that gap and create inspirational, you know, beautiful content that people kind of could add to their mood board of their future life in a way, but also make yeah. it accessible. Um, make it feel not too um, removed from someone's daily life. So sometimes, I mean, we would create all sorts of content, um, not only pins, but primarily it was pins. And yeah, I mean, it would be um, like one example of a very successful pin that uh, I worked on was a campaign for, I think it was Rice Krispie Treats. And and it wasn't just about selling the Rice Krispie Treats. It was about transforming them into, I think, Halloween characters for, you know, the upcoming holiday. So thinking yeah. about these different moments in, in the year, different holidays, and how, um, you know, any brand from a small entrepreneur, small business to a big global brand, you know, mm -hmm. would be able to kind of tap into those events that people are maybe searching for and um, really be relevant to you know the time of year and and the person mm -hmm. who's looking got look. it i think it boils down in terms of what is the possibility that you can do with x brand or x product or x service if there are any services listed or um, posted as things on pinterest but it's just it's not 100 percent clear to a lot of the audience in terms of like if i buy x what will I do with it, right? And I feel like Pinterest was really good in terms of like showcasing, hey, you bought X, here's what you can do with it. What are the possibility that you can actually um, do, create or build from that specific product that you buy? So I think that was just really cool. And thank you for sharing that insights for Pinterest. Um, so is there like one big learning experience that you feel that you really gain from being a woman at Pinterest, Laurie? Um, hmm. I mean, what comes to mind actually is I learned how much I can love working on a team because mm -hmm. um, I'd always sort of seen my career with a mindset of going freelance. And I had that experience working from home two days a week. Yeah. Um, at my job before Pinterest and you know I really thought that's what I want you know that freedom that flexibility ability to work from anywhere travel 
not have to ask for vacation days. You know, that was just like the dream. Um, but my team at Pinterest was really awesome. It was a lot of copywriters, creative strategists, um, producers, and designers. And I was laughing every day. Copywriters are very funny. <laughs> um, and it really was a community of friends and a creative yeah. community that I hadn't had before. Um, so that really showed me how wonderful a creative community is. Uh, and that was probably the most difficult, that was definitely the most difficult thing about uh, going freelance, really, like leaving that, mm -hmm. that job was just feeling like I was leaving those friends behind in a way and, um, you know, fear of missing out for sure. Yeah. Speaking of Halloween too, last Halloween, just seeing all of them dressed up at like the Pinterest Halloween costume competition and just thinking, oh, that looks so fun and I'm sitting here, you know, alone. But Obviously, there are other, you know, very fulfilling reasons for going freelance, which is... Oh, yeah, definitely. So I'm guessing that was the number one thing you missed the most from not being in, uh, like, a um, nine-to-five environment, office, or, like, being on your own as a studio owner, right? Yeah, definitely. That social um, social aspect is, is really nice about being in-house, for sure. I feel the same, actually. I used to work at Sears a long time ago. And you're right. I feel like that communication as a team and then when you're working on a specific project together, um, that team building and working experience, I don't think there is anything that can replace that, right? And when you go on on your own, you feel like, okay, I have my um, own decision in here and I have my own perspective in here you're kind of missing on a few things, but then again, there's always like the pros and cons on two sides anyway. Yeah. I'm pretty sure like the current positions that you have as the founder um, and owner of your own studio gives you the flexibility that you wanted and um, for you to achieve like bigger goal that you have in your life. So Absolutely. pros and cons always, right? <laughs> so actually, <laughs> now let's actually talk more about like taking the leap. Yeah. So this is always an interesting question um, for a lot of people. If you can remember back to the moment that you decide you wanted to go on your own. Yeah. How was that moment? I mean, if you can even share with us that moment a little bit and then what really inspired you to just like, okay, I'm going to quit now and just like go on freelance or like go on on my own. Tell us more about that. I think I had known for years that that was my goal, um, but I was also very go with the flow and you know looking for new experiences and um, very happy with Pinterest too. I mean, I was yeah. I wasn't looking for for freelance gigs outside of that nine to five. I was quite busy and happy and um, but I think I my um, boss at the time, the creative director of my team, she had come from freelance life to mm -hmm. Pinterest. And so on our one-on-ones, we got to, you know, speak about that. And I got to ask her lots of questions. He sort of mentored me into not being so afraid of the unknown, you know, kind of giving me an idea of what it's like, telling me I can totally do it. And like, yes. that's not a question. The question is just like, if I want to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do remember the day that uh, I finally told her, you know, my plan and, and before I even had the words come out, you know, I was sort of like leading up to it. She was like, are you doing it? <laughs> <laughs> kind of like something that I had felt comfortable enough talking to her about, um, mm -hmm. which I think is rare in an office. You know, you don't usually have a boss who you can talk to about your plans to leave. But, um, she, she, was really, she was really great in that way. So I did feel like I had that person who I could, you know, reach out to mm -hmm. after leaving if I had any questions or um, wanted her advice. And yeah, it was, I, I remember telling the team too, and there were like tears. Oh no. From, and from, and from people on my team. It was really, I mean, we were a really tight team and, um, yeah. and I'm also really happy to say that we've all stayed friends and get together every couple of maybe two months or so, or mm -hmm. four months, some of them. So Oh yeah. wow! <laughs> it, was, it was tough to leave, um, and I think too. I was I was really afraid just of the unknown. I was expecting 
that I would just like my portfolio would be this little planet out, you know, in the solar system of a million other websites that no one's ever going to find organically. And how am I going to possibly, you know, get it in front of my dream clients who will mm-hmm. you know, want to work with me. But um, I was really, I was really surprised at how that wasn't the case. So let's talk a little bit about the unknown. Mm-hmm. How scared were you? Like, <laughs> did you actually like get um, to sleep okay? Or you really feel like, oh my God, I can't sleep because I'm thinking about this. Is this going to be like the right decisions? Like what I'm going to do and all that different thing. How scared or how excited were you? I guess you can kind of say like, which one wins? Like <laughs> the excited you or just scared you? Yeah, it's always a fluctuation. I think in those early days of, um, I would say it was excited. I think yeah. when I was still, so when I was at Pinterest, um, I had gotten my portfolio together online and I had been just reached out to by um, two different clients mm-hmm. for big projects. Yeah. Uh, and it gave me, you know, a taste of that, that freelance, you know, lifestyle and the workflow and uh, how it would look um, and have, you know, having those client meetings and, and mm-hmm. developing the food boards and presenting. And um, I really knew from there that it was what I wanted. So that gave me that confidence that I'm not making a huge mistake leaving this great job with this great team. Um, you know, I really felt like I couldn't believe how well it was going with these clients and how awesome yeah. they were. Yeah. And I think otherwise my anxiety would have been too great that, you know, it would have been too strong that I would have these terrible clients. Or the- <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I had this real life experience of these um, two really great clients who made me, you know, it, it, it made me feel more confident. Yeah. Um, Definitely, though, once I had decided I was definitely going to do it and had kind of picked the date I was going to do it and I was going to, you know, give my notice. You planned it so well, right? You really (laughs) planned it so well to the details. (laughs) Um, But then it turns to fear, you know. But I think if you've already been able to sort of um, dip your toe into it or get as much exposure to it as possible. Like, I was really busy in those months when I was still at Pinterest and I had two freelance clients. Like, that's a lot. Um, but it also, it made me feel like, okay, so when I leave, I'll have this work ready for me, even if it's not full-time work, mm-hmm. it's a great, you know, launching point. Wow. That, that is definitely bringing back those moments when I used to work at Sears and then like doing this, um, company on the side and everything. And you're right. When you have like so much work at your, um, main job and you also do like freelance or take on other work outside of that. <laughs> it becomes a lot, right? And I think I asked myself in terms of, okay, can I even do this? I have to let go one thing or the other because I don't think you can live your life just fully work 24-7. I mean, what what kind of life is that, right? And the moment that you realize, okay, I want to do more of that X or I want to do more of that um, job that I have maybe as a freelancer better, you need to really define how is that life going to work and look like for you? And then what would you want to do in order to make it work? I mean, you can always go back to a nine to five job at the end of the day, but I feel like if you really do want to try out being on your own and being a freelancer or or an entrepreneur, at least some have some plan, right? (laughs) Like what you did, Lori, have some plan and then just like test the water just a little bit, just to kind of see, how do I feel about this? Is this something that I really enjoy? Or is it something that I really like doing? Mm -hmm. Do you really want to do it? It Mm -hmm. all comes back and down to, do you really want it? How bad do you want it? Right? So yeah, I 100% agree with what you have done. And the planning part is just also big because if you just like say out of the blue that, hey, I'm gonna quit my job and you don't have any plan, that's just not a good plan. <laughs> it's going to feel so like desperate and um, basically just feel so left out on different things. And you're probably going to create decisions that is not 100% going to be a good result for yourself. So definitely plan. 
<laughs> the heck out, if possible. All right, so I want to go back to your first two years as a freelancer or studio owner. Is there like one thing that you would definitely do differently and you can think of, oh my God, if I can just like go back in time, I'm going to do this thing 100% differently? Um, no, fortunately, there's nothing that I'm like, oh my God, that went horribly wrong. I think <laughs> has been, you know, learnings and, um, you know, sort of evolving, uh, adapting to different clients needs, um, figuring it out as I go. I mean, I think I had, you know, I, I created a pretty strong structure to, you know, mm -hmm. take the leap from and then, you know, whether it's, you know, evolving design agreements and contracts to make sure like, oh, I should probably add a late fee in there after having a client who <laughs> wouldn't pay me for a long time. Or, um, or also just learning that, you know, uh, as a freelancer, you should be picking your clients as much as they pick you. I mean, I, it's rare that I will say no to projects, but you want to make sure that there are no red flags in that first call. Um, yes. A lot of people will reach out, but they might not really be the right fit. So um, that is something that I've learned too, that has maybe given me more confidence too going forward after moments of despair where I've, you know, been in a project that might not be what I want for all of my projects. So um, yeah, looking out, looking out um, for those potential red flags and, and really picking clients. And so that you have a really great working relationship um, and it's like balanced power dynamic. <laughs> I like that you mentioned you can also pick your own clients and yeah. build a relationship. I found that some clients actually get offended with that. I don't know why. The thing is that I feel like it should be a mutual relationship, right? I mean, you need us as much as we need you. And the power of being on your own as a freelancer or having a business on your own is that you also get to pick who do you really want to work with. Obviously, you don't ever want to work with any jerks um, and people who don't really appreciate you as a professional. Yeah. But when you actually being a little bit more critical in terms of like, who do you really want to work with and be a little bit more selective in terms of like clients that you bring on and people that you really want to build a relationship with, it has been quite a really, how do I say this? Like, it has been really helpful for us to really build that great um, relationship and basically like a network of people that you really feel um, as part of bigger community. So I think at the end of the day, you wanted to make sure that people that you're surrounded yourself with, whether it's clients or uh, like friends, supporters, and everybody else um, within the industry are a strong foundation that also help you succeed. Yeah, I have this really fun, well, not fun, but interesting experience when um, we actually, as people that we talk to, I mean, like leads that are coming in, in terms of like, okay, why would you want to work with us? Like, why should we pick you to work with us as well, right? And they actually did get very offended with that question. I was like, whoa, <laughs> if you get super offended being um, asked that really very basic question in my opinion I don't think we even want to work with you like you have to really understand that in order for to make this work we really gonna have to like collaborate with each other right so yeah I feel like it just like really boils down in terms of like making sure that people you want to communicate on any design projects um, and your client basically have um, some sort of like similar mindset to you and really respect you as a professional Absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> I want to get down in terms of like some advices that um, you can share in terms of um, starting out as a freelancer or maybe um, people who are watching this video right now are thinking about it. It's like, okay, how do I prep myself to do that? Like, um, is there like specific advice that you would share with those who are starting out? Um, I would say having a strong portfolio is really important. And if you're just starting out, I mean, that means just putting up whatever you think your best work is. And I think it's okay if it's five things, um, if it's even fewer things, just work that you feel proud of and 
and hopefully if you are starting out, um, hopefully you have time to create fun work, right? Like I, I kind of wish that I could just create like my dream wine bottle design, you know, <laughs> I, you know, just take the time to, you know, imagine your dream client mm -hmm. create work if it doesn't already exist that you would love to create for that client down the road, but do it with your own aesthetic and really developing that point of view for why that dream client should seek you out for that perfect, you know, synergy project. Um, Squarespace is great for portfolios. It, it's super easy and just put up that work. And then I would say, don't put up everything you have, you know, be selective and curate that work. Um, and, yeah, I would say my portfolio is like 1% of less than 1% of everything <laughs> I created. Um, but it's a lot of my favorite work. I think that I was probably most excited yeah. about time, work that I had more creative freedom on. Um, and I always, whenever I have time, you know, like to look at my portfolio with fresh eyes and just, you know, think, hmm, I think if, if I were on a potential client call and they were to seek out this work, like, would I be super proud to speak to this or would I prefer that they had chosen something else? You know, I think it's okay yeah. to, to be selective about your work and, and you can always send that, you know, even if, if a project doesn't make the cut, you can always send that example to, you know, a client if it's in line with something down the road. Um, yeah. Privately. And I honestly agree with that um, advice as well, because basically all the work that you're putting out will attract the similar project that people want to work with you. Mm -hmm. um, so if you don't want to work, let's say, on an icon design, then don't put up any icon design yeah. whatsoever in your portfolio. I personally hate creating icon design. I don't build for that. Um, so I would never include like an actual icon design from scratch on my portfolio. However, if you're really into like animations or you're really into like illustration and all that different things, um, make it specific enough so that you are known for that particular either like style or that specific approach or that specific um, niche in that design um, aspect right because there's so much more in design there's a like, like you Laurie you like artists and designers I mean like there's also like um, UI design and all that different things so if you have way too much um, like skills in that portfolio sure it's gonna look like it's such a diverse portfolio but then you're gonna have a hard time figuring out okay who are my clients really are um are they people who are really looking for illustration or are you people who are looking for ui are they people who are looking for animations like there's so many different things that's going on right now and even from the client perspective when they're looking at your site they don't know how to work with you exactly because you have such a diverse portfolio Mm -hmm. And they don't really know how to, uh, what potential um, specific thing that they have in mind for their project could really benefit from working with you. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a balance too, because I think if you look so incredibly specific, yeah, a great potential client that you would have loved to work with could be like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, they only do cereal boxes. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think we all gonna have to find that balance, right? Because I feel like as an artist and designer at, or as a creative um, at heart, there is this need that we have to always get challenged on new things mm -hmm. and we can get so bored with just one thing. So I, I get that. Um, so I think it's just coming down in terms of like, how can you create that specific balance that you want? Maybe you have um, a great skill in illustration and design. So maybe you can do both graphic design and illustration as well but not so diverse like you have this 10 things and you become the jill of all trades and all that kind of thing so yeah, yeah definitely refine being being selective right <laughs> definitely and um on my portfolio at least in its current iteration i have you know design on you know the home page and then illustration on its own page so they're mm -hmm. kind of separated for these different aesthetics um because they are different clients usually. I mean, I have been able to, to do illustration on packaging design and branding, you know, all kind of wrapped up for one client, which is always a great experience to be able to really, um, you know, do the whole multifaceted approach. But 
I like to keep them separate, I think, for that reason, so that maybe the illustration doesn't dominate the design or vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, so that the client sort of knows if they're coming to me for illustration, I don't waste their time with, you know, packaging design and branding, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, kind of help lead that potential client or visitor um, to have the experience they might be looking for. Awesome. Well, Laurie, this has been a wonderful <laughs> opportunity to chat with you and talk about your experience at Pinterest and all these like things that you um, overcome and uh, basically experience throughout your journey as a designer, artist, and founder of your own studio now. Is there anything else you wanted to share before we kind of wrap up our interview? Um, I guess one thing that I learned at um, a design conference last year that I heard that really stuck with me that I think is applicable, especially to those who might be wanting to take the leap or, you know, wanting to move into something um, but not sure how. Mm -hmm. I, I remember they just said to really, really know that art and design is so, it's so valuable to business. And just to know that value and, and don't be, you know, just giving it away for free and underselling oh, yeah. it, you know? Um, and I think a lot of, there are so many platforms that you hear about, especially for freelancers, where someone will be like, give me five logos and I'll pay you more. <laughs> Stay away from those people. I mean, you know, you, I think if you continue to develop a portfolio and a body of work, it'll, it will speak for itself and just be confident that mm -hmm. you are valuable and, and that you, yeah, are, you should do it <laughs> if you want to do it, you know? And yes. just, I agree hundred um, percent. However, though, on that point, it definitely does make me feel super sad whenever I hear other people or even like some of our clients went through those sites and they are exploring like way too many options for their logo, right? I mean, but if you are really on a basically like bootstrapping budget and you don't have a lot to to give to or just like hire someone to do your logo, sure, that's fine. But the thing is that I, I think as a creative, we tend to feel like, okay, I'm just gonna make a quick box. I, I think that really hurts one, yourself, and then second, the industry, right? Because then we're not being seen as the problem solver, we're just being seen as, okay, an order taker. So I, I think it's our responsible as well in terms of like making sure that we are creating a very healthy industry that everyone um, can thrive in it as well and making sure that you value your own um, skill and perspective as a problem solver in the industry. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. All right. This, I can talk on and on about this, but I feel like we have captured a lot of great things today, Laurie, and I'm just like so grateful to have you on our show today. And yes, this is it, you guys, um, well, ladies. This is all for our interview with Laurie Berger. Please subscribe to our channel to watch more Women in Design Spotlight videos. Also, make sure to connect with both myself and Lori online. We'll make sure to include the link in the description, and we hope that you have a wonderful day. Bye! Thank you so much.